Hey guys, this is Brent with Likens Motorsports. You're looking at a picture of a 311 cubic inch small block Ford. Uh, this is probably among some of my favorite builds and uh, this is one of my dyno mules that I built several several years ago uh, to test some some cam stuff and some other parts and it made a whole lot of horsepower and uh, we kind of called it the little engine that could. So um, for this episode we're going to go over this 311 um, cubic inch small block Ford and um, let's get started. Alright so every once in a while I get a wild hair to build a dyno mule and just to test various parts. Um, anything, any information that I gain from a dyno mule goes to help you guys. So um, I try to do a lot of different testing and a lot of testing on different parts and, and camshaft testing and that sort of thing. Um, this block that you see here, um, it's actually <clears throat> a 5 liter block out of a, it's either a 2000 or 2001 uh, Ford Explorer. So basically the same block that we're working with with Triple J. And um, as, as with all my builds, they always get the same amount of prep work and machine work. So um, baked and tumbled to clean them up. And then we pressure test those and Magnaflux, uh, the main saddles, that sort of thing. Uh, bored and honed with torque plates. And the decks are squared up and the mains are cleaned up with the appropriate ARP fasteners. Um, as far as that goes, uh, once the block is machined, then we do some final prep work. If you want to know um, what prep work I do for the Windsor blocks, we just did a nice video on oil mods for every engine family. And as you can see in this one, um, I opted to uh, tap the hole down inside of the uh, the block where the oil comes up to touch the lifters, lifter galleries, and tap that for a restrictor to restrict the oil to the lifters. Um, that ensures more oil gets to the mains and the rods and um, good benefit from that. Alright, so we're going to focus on the rotating assembly here for a few minutes. Um, I used an Eagle crank on this engine. Uh, it's a 4340 steel crank. Um, I got this for like a hundred bucks and um, it was a new crank so I couldn't pass that up. I don't use a lot of Eagle stuff and I think I've only used probably two Eagle cranks and maybe one set of Eagle rods during my uh, engine building career and um, there's been some failures and some quality control stuff so um, I generally lean towards scat but for a hundred bucks I couldn't I couldn't pass this up and uh, we had it magged and uh, walked all over it just to make sure there weren't any journal issues or, or heat treatment issues or anything like that so um, that's what we went with three inch stroke as you can see there um, and we coupled the crank with a pretty eclectic group of parts. So let's look at the connecting rod. So what you're looking at there is a set of R and R custom aluminum rods, and I had these made um, with a small block Ford rod journal, uh, like a 302, 289 size, obviously for the Eagle crank and a 927 wrist pin diameter and a 5700 length so um, pretty long for a, a, a 3 inch stroke it makes for a really short piston which is good makes for a light piston the rods were really really light and um, you know a lot of people don't like to run aluminum rods on the street um, a lot of people do run aluminum rods on the street and um, with uh, with new technology and new billets and that sort of thing um, there's a lot of people that run them on daily drivers as well so um, I think times are changing for aluminum rods and uh, this will probably be something that I will um, look into a little bit more further on, on street engines and street strip engines 
they do have their drawbacks. You have to um, make allowance for them growing with heat, as with anything aluminum. Um, the rods themselves have um, a dowel pin in the big end, and you have to use a doweled rod bearing. Um, this just ensures that um, when when all the heat gets into the rod, that the bearing doesn't have any chance to spin. So I'll show a picture here of um, of that rod cap dowel, and you can see how that's made. You can see there the dowel, and you can also see the serrations on the cap, and those fit the serrations on the rod itself. Um, aluminum rods are much bigger. Uh, the big end is usually pretty fat, so you have to do some allowances on making things fit. You generally won't see these with a big long stroke. This one used ARP 2000 bolts. You can see that I had to uh, notch the cylinders there. Um, to let the rod bolts clear the cylinders. All right, let's take a look at the pistons. Uh, we use some custom race tech pistons. You can see how light they are, uh, about 378 grams. That's not the lightest, but it's pretty light. Um, a little bit of a dome uh, to get the compression ratio where we wanted it to be. Um, vertical gas ports, you can see, metric ring pack. So all good quality parts, short compression height because of the longer rod. And then for the front end of the motor, we've got a Cloy's billet timing set. Uh, use a lot of those on pretty much every engine that I build. A uh, really good high quality kit. Uh, billet gears with a nine keyway uh, crank gear. You can see there using an ARP cam bolt and washer. A little bit of blue, blue Loctite on there. And then to get a really accurate uh, compression ratio calculation, um, I pour the top of the piston so that you can see what the difference is um, in the volume, including what's called the crevice volume, which is the volume um, above the top ring to the top of the piston. So it varies from piston to piston, but you always need to uh, include it if you really want to get down and dirty on the compression ratio. This one was about, uh, I think, 10.2 to 1, 10 and a quarter to 1, something like that. And then we degree the camshaft and um, check piston to valve clearance. You can see well, you can see what heads we're using. We're using AFR uh, Renegade heads, 185 cc's, and uh, you also get a little glimpse of the rocker arms that we're using. I'm not going to divulge that yet, but uh, we'll talk about uh, the top end here in a second. And there's a shot of the assembled short block with a timing, uh, timing chain cover on there. Um, 
again race tech pistons and custom r and r uh, rods aluminum rods eagle crank got the block painted gallery plugs are in uh, lifter valley standoffs are in stand pipes nice looking short block there then we'll take a look at uh, getting the lifters in Standard small block four diameter on those solid roller lifters. We're using a solid roller camshaft. Um, pretty aggressive lobes. Um, believe it or not, a very uh, small lift cam. Um, about 530 lift. A uh, good bit of duration for this size engine, but aggressive solid roller camshaft and uh, made a good bit of horsepower. We'll go over that here in a second. There's a good shot of the completed rotating assembly. Shows how big and fat those aluminum rods are. But uh, everything's Torqued in there, ready to go. ARP main bolts. Block painted with, I um, can't remember which brand. I use either Duplicolor or VHT ceramic engine paint, so it's one of the two. And there's a good shot of the cylinder heads. So again, we're using AFR 185cc Renegade cylinder heads. These use a 20216 valve package with an 8mm stem. Um, got those in bare and matched those up with um, my own spring package that would match the camshaft. And follow those up with some titanium uh, valve spring retainers the pockets in those heads are very small so if you think that you can get away with you know a 1550 or 16 or 1650 valve spring you won't be able to do it um, there's only a few um, springs that will sit down in that pocket for a solid roller camshaft and luckily i was able to find a, a light valve spring and retainer package you can see there that the install heights uh, were about 1770 somewhere around there give or take a few thousands there's a good shot of checking piston of valve clearance and check checking radial and depth of both both sorry learned how to or I forgot how to speak English there um, so one of those things that you know we check and and get experience on is piston of valve clearance we didn't really have much depth clearance um, we had 80 thousandths on both intake and exhaust and then you'll lose 10 of that when the aluminum rod gets longer under heat so we were working with about 70 thousandths piston uh, valve to piston clearance there um, there's a shot of the felpro head gaskets going on
and then there's a good shot of the heads going on with ARP head bolts and Jessel rockers. So um, you really want as rigid of a valve train as you can possibly get on on these engines, and um, that includes the rocker arms and the push rods and everything in between. So valve train rigidity means that you keep the lift that you should have and it doesn't waver under spring load. So let me show you the push rods. So I use custom push rods. These were made by Smith Brothers. They are a 7 16 diameter and you can see there the length is 6 650 so these are little stumpy telephone poles. Um, the more rigid your valve train is the more horsepower you will make and um, it starts with with the push rods and and the rocker arms And we're getting closer to a fire up. We've got an MSD distributor in there with Ford Racing plug wires, um, nine millimeter plug wires, uh, aluminum, new aluminum water neck, uh, a GMB, I think is the brand. It's kind of like an off brand aluminum water pump. You know, we spend about 60, 70 bucks on those. And a uh, Mylodon oil pan setup for a Fox body chassis. If uh, so desired to put it in one but ready to fire up so are you guys ready to hear the dyno video You may want to go back and listen to that a couple more times, but here's the results. We did quite a f bit of tuning uh, with different carb spacers and this and that, and um, ended up with 535 horsepower at 7,400 RPM. So we were spinning it a little over 7,600. We made 454 pound-feet of torque. So some good numbers. Oil pressure stayed rock solid. Uh, air fuel ratios were rock solid because this was a Joe Crane ported um, Victor Junior intake, actually the Ford Motorsports version of the Victor Junior intake. Um, everything just in really fabulous shape there. 36 degrees total timing. Um, you read my notes there. Half inch super sucker with a quarter inch phenolic. So you set and you do different, uh, you know, tests. Engines like all kinds of different things, and you really can't make a general statement as to what all engines like. You have to play with different things and, and see what kind of power you can pull. So, I know all the naysayers are going, well, only 535 horsepower? Well, you have to remember, this is um, 10 and a quarter to 1. Okay, this is a pump gas engine. Um, Another two or three points of compression would pick it up another 40, 50 horsepower. So this would make a just a really stout street engine uh, that you could put 93 octane in and roll it down the road. 530 horsepower, 450 pound-feet of torque. Um, I don't give out cam specs, but again, I gave um, uh, a clue on, on the valve lift. It was... Uh, 
if I remember right, right, it was around 530 lift. It was a small lift cam. Um, just because of piston valve clearance issues. So uh, it was a dyno mule, but um, you know sometimes you just don't want to spend time fly cutting pistons and seeing how thin you could get, that sort of thing. Um, intake duration at 50 thousandths was only 239 degrees. So, you know, a uh, testament to a good solid combination. Not a lot of cam. Um, out of the box head with no port work, just some really tightly blueprinted oiling and valve spring setups and cam specs and a ported intake. And there's a shot of the engine on the engine hoist going to the dyno. So nice looking engine, whole lot of horsepower for 311 cubic inches and um, pretty pretty proud of that little guy myself. Thank you guys for hanging in with me and watching this episode. Uh, stay tuned and make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. we got a lot more stuff coming. Um, hurt my back a couple weeks ago. Just had an MRI. Come back and said I had a bulged L4, L5. Um, herniated my L5S1 five years ago. So I am slowly becoming less and less of a man. Um, so shop uh, duties will be a little slow here for a little bit, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to jump back into getting some hardcore engines out the door soon. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you don't have any bulge discs. Uh, have a good weekend, and I'll talk to you later.